I'll introduce Fetch. And welcome to Avini Vibes. Today is what? October 5th. Oh my gosh. Timeline. Hmm. Weeks of a blur. Um, but I want to just reach out to those on the call and giving me personally and my husband, Craig, who uh, struggled with a awful uh, motor uh, three surgeries and still on the healing on the mend. But I just want to thank each of you and all the support of the Avini family. I'm very grateful for that. And it is nice to be back. Great um, opportunity. I might not have the opportunity to stay on because I'm literally and it's right near the university but it's almost like a ronald mcdonald house for adults and it's really a blessing the only thing is that um, a lot of other guests in here and um, i want to be respectful for them but again i might lose you on the internet so with that i Grateful to have Rich Carter with us. Rich, it's good to see you. And Rich is going to share his story. And he's here tonight with us, Chip and, and Kyle. And thank you for being here. So, Rich, well, kind of jump in and hear your story, your Vini story, and your own personal testimony, please. Uh, thank you, Christine, and and our prayers go out to um, you and your husband and uh, the battle that you've you've um, uh, you haven't chosen, but you have certainly chosen to meet that battle with your battle pack. <laughs> we were talking before the call started how you have your battle pack of of any uh, tools to to help uh, help with that situation. Well, my name is Rich Cotter. I live in Spanish Fork, Utah. Uh, mountain time zone here, uh, and uh, so it's a little bit earlier. Um, my my story began um, a couple of years ago. My wife had kept getting this uh, prompting, if you will, that that she she should encourage me to go see the doctor, and I wasn't opposed to that. But uh, we were very busy at the time. Um, and we were involved with some volunteer work uh, in Africa, remotely uh, helping students get online education there and we were coordinating the efforts of about 500 other volunteers and and uh, several thousand students and it's a rapidly growing program it's called BYU Pathway Connect and uh, they're going through a, a lot of growing pains and my job was to help deal with a lot of those uh, those issues uh, to try to smooth that process as as that program continues to grow and um, so I was I wasn't unwilling to go to the doctor. I was just telling my wife, you know, I'm too busy and too busy. And then finally I got the feeling you better pay attention to your wife <laughs> and uh, just kind of got that little uh, prompting of a, a little bit of a chastisement, if you will. And so I did, I went and saw the doctor and um, actually the, everything looked pretty good, except uh, one of the tests they did was a, a blood test that came back with a, a high number for my PSA, which is, uh, pro for the prostate. And he said, you better go check check that out. Go to the specialist and see what he says. So I did. Went and saw the, the specialist and and he said, um, first of all, you've got an enlarged prostate, which I figured I did because that's kind of in my family. Um, he said, it's the size of Connecticut, <laughs> which is, uh, you know, he was humorous, but he was trying to tell me, you know, it's a, it's a, a fairly large prostate, um, but also the PSA was because it's high, so that can be caused by a number of things. It can be caused by an enlarged prostate, it can be caused by an inflamed uh, prostate, or it can be caused by bad cells in the prostate. And they they don't really know from that number. So if somebody has a big number, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean they've got bad cells, but it uh, it's um it, it's a window that uh, requires them to do further testing if if you want to know. And the, the test they do for that is a biopsy, which is no no fun. Uh, they basically uh, take stick you with 12 different needles to extract uh, 12 different tissue samples from different parts of the prostate, and they send that off to be analyzed. And um, the lab analyzes it, sends it back, and and says, uh, well, you know, what what that what's going on in those in those particular samples. 
and they gave you a score. It's called a Gleason score. Mine was seven, which isn't horrible, but it's not good. And it means that you have some bad cells, uh, deadly disease uh, going on in your prostate. And then you have to ask the question, okay, what are we going to do about that? In some cases, it can be a slow moving process. Um, it can hang around for many years. And, and uh, m most men, as they grow older, uh, will actually die with that issue if they don't die of it. And they know that because they've done autopsies on a lot of old guys that died. And, and almost all of them have at least the beginnings of that. Uh, but in some cases, it can be very aggressive and it can go fast and spread and get in the bones in all kinds of places and destroy your life. And, and in, in, in fact, my, my wife's father, my father-in-law had died of that. And so it got our attention. Uh, this is something that we weren't too, too happy to hear about, but uh, at least it was nice to know. We've kind of felt like we'd been led to, to find out about it at an early stage. And he felt like it, it was an early stage. And um, they, they talk about different treatments for that problem. Uh, you'll hear about uh, radiation. You'll hear about uh, hormone therapy. Another name for that is chemical castration uh, because of the hormones that they, they give to you. Um, and and the, the third option is um, uh, having the prostate removed surgically. They call that radical prostatectomy. And in my case, that's the one he said that would be the, really the only appropriate one in, in my particular situation because of, um, you know, just the way it was. And so that's the choice I was looking at about two years ago. Do I do this surgery or not? Um, I started looking into that. The more I learned about it, the scarier it seemed, just because it can be very devastating to a guy and to a couple. Uh, certainly going to affect romance, certainly going to affect uh, continence, um, all those kinds of issues, and, and really uh, you know, take the gusto out of a guy. And um, it's not a, not a trivial effect, if you will. In fact, um, I, I may have a joke. The only minor surgery is surgery on somebody else, right? <laughs> Uh, any kind of surgery on you is is uh, it's a big deal. Um, but I was actually willing to do it if it was the right thing to do. But fortunately, before I signed up for that, we made a little trip from where we live up to Montana. We used to live, my wife's from Montana. We used to live in Billings. Our son lives there. And we were visiting with our son and his family and happened to go out to breakfast with some dear old friends from when we lived there, uh, Barb Ostrom and her husband, Kent. And I love Barb. She's uh, She's a medical technologist. She's worked in the Billings lab, uh, doing um, the, the medical lab work there for many, many years. Uh, even during the pandemic, they called her back in because they were shorthanded and had extra load on, on lab work. And, uh, but she's also a natural health enthusiast. And so for some reason, I just uh, said to her, shared this, uh, this diagnosis that I've gotten with her um, I don't even know why why I did that, because it's not something you, you want to talk with everyone about. But she said, uh, well, there's a, an amazing biochemist that you need to know about by the name of, of uh, Rick Deitch. He has made some discoveries in natural healing that could really help you. And she also happened to share with me the story of Dave Johnson, who'd had the very same issue that I did a few years before. And he'd use some of those discoveries uh, to with an amazing result. And I knew Dave Johnson. I had known him for 30 years. He'd been in our home and and uh, been a dear friend, but we hadn't been close for a long time. And so I actually did call up Dave Johnson and asked him to tell me his what he had done. And uh, he shared with me that uh, that he used um, the products that, that Rick had had developed. And after about uh, three months of, of using those products. Um, his doctor could no longer find the bad cells. They they had disappeared. And I, that sounded pretty good to me. Um, but uh, for me, it became kind of a spiritual question. Do I, you know, a matter of prayer, do I do I get the surgery that the doctor says I need or do I go this other direction that worked for, Fran, for, for Dave? And I, I did trust Dave and I trust Barb, but this technology was new to me. And, and I felt strongly not to have the surgery, instead to to go forward and with confidence with what was offered through Avini Health. And so I actually went back to my doctor and, um, you know, had a follow up visit. And uh, he was urging me to schedule the surgery as soon as possible. And I said, uh, I'm not going to do the surgery right now. Instead, I'm going to try a natural approach. And bless his heart, he said, uh, well, let's monitor it and see if it works for you. He was a bit skeptical, 
but he was open enough to monitor it. And I said, how will we monitor it? How will we know if it's working? And he said, well, you come back in three months. And if your numbers go down, then we'll know, know it's working. And so I did, I came back in three months. And during that three months, I used um, the cell defender at the Marcy dose. Uh, originally it was 10 drops uh, every waking hour. And later I heard Marty C say, the product has improved over the years. Uh, five drops every waking hour could also be considered the Marcy dose. And so I, I, I dropped back a little bit on that. Um, I, I used, also used the, um, the Z immunity mushrooms. Uh, David used both of those earlier versions of both of those products. But then I also added in the nano silver. And I've learned since that that's an important element in this kind of a battle. And uh, and really used all the Vinny products. But those are the three that I would say um, have, a, have a bearing on this kind of an issue directly uh, and, and more, most quickly. And so uh, for those three months, I was faithfully using the products, went back for another blood test. And lo and behold, my numbers dropped in half. And uh, that was good news. The doctor was pleased and he said, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. And I, I told him a little bit about what I was doing, but, you know, he didn't, they don't give him a lot of time to sit around and chat with the patients. They're loaded up with all kinds of a, a big schedule and lots of patients to see. And he said, come back in four more months. And I came back in four more months and um, he did another blood test. And lo and behold, my numbers dropped again quite dramatically almost in half again. And he said, whatever you're doing, there's no medical ex explanation for what's happened here other than the, the, the products you're using. Please tell me more. And so I explained to him a little bit more about what I was doing and a little bit about the science behind it. And afterward, he said, I feel like today you've given me more than I've given you. And uh, I thought that was kind of cool. And and so, um, He's he's no longer urging me to have the surgery. I asked him, do I need another biopsy to make sure it's gone? And he said, uh, there's there's some risks that go along with having the biopsy and, and itself. And so as long as your numbers are this low, we're not going to put you through that again. And I was relieved to hear that because uh, that biopsy process is no fun. Um, uh, just look that up on the Internet, uh, prostate biopsy, and see see how that uh, what goes on with that. And it's, it's not, not a lot of fun. Uh, but the other thing that I want to share about that, you know, when, as we get older, I'm 70 years old now, and uh, as guys get older, there's always this joke, you know, don't let any opportunity to to, to hit a restroom uh, pass you by, because uh, a lot of times you wind up with urgency to go, and uh, you're looking for a place to go, and then when you get there, you can't go, because, uh, you know, the prostate is is affecting that whole process, and, and uh, the you know, a couple of years ago when this process was, when my, 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 I still had the, before, before Avini, my wife and I went to a movie one time and we're here, we are sitting in the movie and it's an exciting action movie. And I, I had to get up four different times during that movie, run to the bathroom. And when I got there, I couldn't do anything. And uh, it's just infuriating. So I'm going back and then I have to do it all over again. And, and I compare that uh, to a, a recent time we went to the movie and about halfway through the movie, I had, I had drunk too much, you know, <laughs> and uh, fluids and water and so forth, uh, and and uh, felt like I needed to go. But you know, I thought, well, I can I can wait. I think I'm okay. And so I waited all the way through the movie. Uh, didn't have to miss any of it. Uh, then I went to the the men's room, and lo and behold, uh, I was able to go, no problems. I thought, wow, that's a huge contrast uh, for what it was like before. And it's uh, great not to get up as often in, in the middle of the night. Great to have more energy. And for me, it's been, I feel like a lifesaver uh, to use these products uh, and for that problem. And of course, along the way, we've, we've seen lots of other benefits as well. And one story that I want to share is my, my, my 94, my 95 year old mom. Uh, she moved in with us a few years ago, figuring she wouldn't live very long uh, just because of her age, not because of health. But she has been concerned because she has had bl high blood pressure for many years. She's been on medication for that. She's had high cholesterol and her blood sugar has been borderline. Uh, and and those those things uh, have, have worried her that she might wind up with a stroke. And uh, she wouldn't mind going with a stroke. She figures she's ready to graduate whenever the right time is. But the, the worst thing she'd want is, is one that would leave her debilitated and in incapacitated. 
And, uh, you know, she started using these products as well. She was a little bit uh, reluctant, but she said, well, I'll give them a try. And, and uh, she loves the fiber that solved her bathroom issues uh, with, with um, constipation that she's fought for many years. She recently went to the doctor and the blood pressure that she's been fighting for many years has come down. Not nearly as, as scary as it was before. It's a tiny bit high, but for her, it's actually much better than it's been in years. Uh, her cholesterol was perfect and uh, her blood sugar is down. And it's kind of fun to see those kind of numbers uh, as you're trying to, to help your mom have the best quality of life that she can at this stage of her life. She also has a knee that's bone on bone and, and uh, she's too old for a, a knee replacement. But uh, plus relief on that knee makes it possible for her to get around without being in excruciating pain walking with well, on that knee. So many other stories, but uh, that's that's a little bit about why we got involved. Mm -hmm. There's another side to my story, and that is uh, we had been involved uh, along with Dave Johnson in a, a previous company for many years and were successful. We built a diamond distributorship. We were starting to earn a, a, a nice uh, diamond income. And then suddenly the company got sold, the culture changed, the commitment to quality changed, the compensation plan changed, and our group began to fall apart. And we thought, oh, well, we can we can weather through this. And, and we, you know, we love the products, um, but we didn't realize that the, the, the opportunity had been crippled the way it had been. And we hung on too long, got in some financial bind and finally had to go get a job, <laughs> believe it or not. And, and it was a, it was embarrassing. Um, it was a disappointment. We kind of went into the stage where we said uh, never again for network marketing. We'd, we'd had our hearts broken uh, because what we'd put our trust in was no longer um, worthy of our trust. And we, we, it took too long for us to figure that out. And so uh, when this came along, of course, I knew it was a network marketing opportunity and, and I was reluctant uh, we, Rhonda and I had sworn never again. Um, but as I heard the stories of what it had done for Dave and so many others, and uh, I'd heard Chip talk about how we were stepped into a, a, a stream of miracles with these, with these uh, discoveries, um, I thought, well, do I have a responsibility? Uh, the responsibility that Chip talks about is the responsibility of a survivor. When you've been the survivor to share I have this responsibility to tell others. And as I, I perfectly consider that, I felt, yes, it, it was a responsibility for me to share this with others. And if I would do so, it would be the means of bringing a blessing to many other people. And so it's become a, 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 a mission, if you will, to uh, bring that blessing to others and share it with others. Uh, we're certainly uh, uh, excited about the company. We feel like this is a place that deserves our trust. Um, I love Rick Deitch and, and trust what he's created. Um, I love Neil Roth, that he's at the helm making the, the tough decisions and the smart decisions to keep it viable. I love uh, Doug Dickey. And these these three founders are people that I found uh, I can put my confidence in. And not only that, the member the members of the Avini family. Uh, what a wonderful community of people who are like-minded uh, without the big egos uh, the, or the narcissistic egos that sometimes you see in a company, we, we don't have those, and I hope we never do. And, and, and also, um, you know, when we've gone to the, to the, to the summits, uh, we were a little bit nervous. Is this going to be one of those kind of meetings where it's full of hype? And, and it hasn't been. It's been full of heart instead of hype. And uh, it's just been such a delight to find a home in the Avini family of people that, uh, that we feel, feel drawn to that are trying to make a difference. And yes, you can make a good, great business out of this too. And, uh, and, and that's important, but you really have to say, okay, what, what kind of a difference am I, am I gonna make as I pursue this business? Uh, it's not just about the money, it's about whose lives can you impact for the best. So that's a little bit about my story. And and uh, when I asked Christine before the meeting started, you know, what she wanted me to focus on, she just said, share your story and then open it up for questions. And if there are any questions, I'd, I'd be glad to, to um, give you my take. Anyone have any questions for Rich? 
You can unmute yourself if you have a question that you'd like to ask him. Yeah, I have a question. Hi, Carol. Yeah. So, Rich, um, you said that because I come from kind of your background of never again. Yeah. <laughs> for multi level and um, had a really bad experience around it. And um, so, when you came in, did you come in at the very beginning of a Vini? So we, we first heard about these products in late February of 2022. And uh, Avini had not quite started uh, the uh, the affiliate program. Uh, it's amazing to see how fast Neil put this together because uh, they made the decision, you know, in January, I think, that they were going to start their own company. And by February, they were saying, OK, we're going to start off with an affiliate program until we get everything in place. And we were right there before the very first affiliates signed up. And um, and so when that affiliate program became available, they told us we needed to have a, um, like a, a, an ID number or a referral number from our from our sponsor. Uh, so I actually called up Barb and said, okay, do you have your number yet? And she said, no. And I said, well, call up Dave and get, get his number so you can sign up under him and then we'll sign up under you. And, and so we actually got our first products in March of 2022. And then we had the, the, the official launch uh, or pre-launch. I don't know what to call it, but uh, the mark, current marketing plan was March. It was launched in May of 2022. So we've been in since the beginning of Avini, but not before. Uh, there are so many people that were involved with Rick's products and his discoveries from previous iterations that also had their issues <laughs> because of mismanagement. And uh, the truth of it, uh, network marketing is is the best business business model there there is out there, uh, but it's also possible to screw it up in a lot of ways. <laughs> and it's uh, so there's good ones and there's bad ones. And the thing that I do love about Avini is I feel like they've done it right. And there's nothing better than the network marketing when it's done right with the right products, the right people, the right message, the right mission. And I think that's what we have our, our hands on here. I just want to jump in a minute and share something. Um, you know, what one of the things that I have been involved with other companies in the past and very successfully and some that failed. But um, I think one of the the differentials here with Avini, it's a it's truly about um helping others, you know, that's first and foremost. It's always about that first. And uh, some of the you have, may have just jumped on the call. Um, I've been up here at the University of Syracuse with a husband laying in an ICU, and and what it it, it really opened my eyes to. Um, you know, I reached out to Chip and Marcy right away of of what happens to someone when they uh, go through something of so much trauma or something with rich. You know, you look for the answers. Uh, you look for the answer. So I did reach out, out to my Avini family, Chip and Marcy. Um, Marcy grabbed the phone out of Chip's hand, I think, when I was talking because she wanted to make sure that, you know, I knew exactly what to do, the support that came because, you know, it's and when you have trauma, one of the things they do is they, you know, when you're having broken bones at surgery, it's oxycodone and it's uh, gamma pentin and it's um, raboxol or whatever it's called for muscles and, and and nerve pain. And then, you know, the breakthrough is a, even a heavier narcotic called fentanyl. And so I'm watching him lay there with all these things. So that's the battle pack as Kyle's <laughs> came out and, and they were right there. So it's, it's always about first and foremost us helping one another and again you know thank you for that because i see every floor and this is just one hospital in so many places in the country that are having people like my husband laying in those beds doing those things and they don't have us you know um but we we are the people uh rich like you said you you got a mission now as i feel i got a mission too so I thank you for that opportunity. Anyone else want to jump in and ask Rich a question or ask Chip a question or Kyle, any, you know, just please feel free to share or I'm just grateful to be back. I'd like to make a, a statement to Rich, but it also includes Marcy and Chip. Uh, we all have a story. Uh, right now, Christine is going through her story, living it as it happens with Craig. But we all have a story and that story is important. For us, because it it makes us uh, have a position of solidarity in our mind and with others. And Rich, I can tell you that I have used your story many times, and you are helping people that you never 
you may never know who they are, but lots of folks being helped by yours, your story, as long as Chip and, and Marcy, and I've talked with Chip and Marcy quite a bit, and they are willing and uh, eager to assist others. And it's a giver's, uh, it's a giver's place here with Avini, and I see that all through here. So I'm praising the Lord for each of you. Thank you very much. You know, I'd, I'd just like to um, add something to my story that I, that I did not say, and that is when I was on the phone with Dave initially, and he was telling me his story, uh, one of the things that he did is he put Chip on the phone. And uh, we had a, a great conversation, and I knew Chip and Marcy from before and, uh, and, and had great respect for them. And it was, it was wonderful to talk to old friends who cared. And I'm so grateful that, for the opportunity to reconnect with Chip. And we've had the opportunity to get to know each other much better than we did before, to work closely together, to try to help, um, to, to do some things to help the entire Avini family. And uh, that's really my mission. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm certainly interested in building my own business, but I think I have um, a very strong compulsion to do what I can to help everyone in the Avini family. It's one of the reasons why I created the AviniHealthTraining.com website. Um, initially, I just made it for myself. You know, people started sending me links to videos and the Zooms and all this stuff. And I thought, well, how am I going to organize this stuff? So I put it in a spreadsheet. And, and uh, then over time, people have made suggestions about how to make it better. And yeah, it's still pretty amateurish and it's still pretty clunky and it's still, it's too big. But, you know, I can't, I can't throw any of that stuff away. <laughs> it's just uh, such a treasure. Uh, so we've tried to organize it in a way to make it as use, useful as we can. And then one day somebody said, well, it's, it's hard to find the testimonials. Uh, you know, the testimonials are out there, but how do you know where they are? And then we came up with the idea of a testimonial index and uh, got some volunteers to listen to those testimonials and, and, and create tags. You know, who made the testimonial? Where is it found? What recording? When does it start in that recording? What did they what, what were the issues they were dealing with? And and, and today we passed just passed over a thousand testimonials that have been indexed. Uh, and on about 50 some odd different health issues. Wow. And uh, so if you if you want to know, hey, does this pro do these products help with this or that kind of a thing? We've tried to do it in a compliant way, um, but it's in a way that creates a treasure of the heartfelt stories that Alan was talking about. Everybody has their story and you listen to some of these stories and you can't listen to some of them without tears in your eyes. Uh, as these people's lives have been literally uh, change with hope from a, an avenue that for most of them was unexpected. So true. And we're grateful that you've put that together because it is a wonderful resource and I'm sure it's time consuming, but you've done. Mm. Doing that for all of us. Well, it gets updated almost every day with something new. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the call this morning uh, with, with, uh, uh, Diamond dis distributor Paige Wolf uh, sharing how do you how do you follow up and keep you know keep in touch with your people? Uh, what a great call that was! And uh, you know the call the call on uh, on Wednesday yesterday with with Chip sharing you know how can we make sure that we create an opportunity where where we're not going to fail we're not going to shoot ourselves in the foot with improper languaging or or you know the call on on uh, Tuesday with uh, Dave Johnson ho hosting Udonna Power on Monday, the testimonial call mm -hmm. that, that Darren hosted. Every one of those is a treasure. It's hard to listen to them all, but, uh, you know, find the time. But but there they are. They're recorded. So if you didn't have the time to be on it live, you can listen to it. And when you can't sleep at night or you're out on your bike uh, riding around, listen to it like a podcast or whatever. Carol's got a good tip. Carol, tell tell everybody what you do. Um, so what I do and Rich, thank you because it really helped me. I told you, I come from a background where, <laughs> you know, I really didn't have a good feeling around multi-level and I decided to go every day and listen to one of the testimonials. I go onto your sheet and I listen to a different one every day to start my day. And it has built such a belief 
for me inside of the Avini family, the Avini products, the the Avini business. Um, like I'm a lifer. And I'm telling you, if you guys go and do that in a month's time, the the belief that you build will be incredible, really incredible. And then when I run into something that I really like, I go and share it with my team. So I'm telling you, thank you, Rich, for doing that. Cause I know, I know what that takes. I, I do that kind of stuff and I know what that takes. And I know it takes some real dedication to put all of that together and have that all work and Thank you, because it really has made a difference for me. Huge. Well, speaking of testimonials, I'll just share a little uh, uh, tidbit with you that, um, you know, we, we have the Avini app, um, but it's going to be replaced with a, a better Avini app soon. And Doug Dickey has been working heavily on that project. And he's asked me to help uh, to take some of those testimonials, shorten them up, um, Add, add add a you know a kind of an introduction and a, and a trailer uh, to kind of make them more uniform, and so we've been in the process of, of refining some of those um, key testimonials. So we have a bunch of short you know one two three four five six minute uh, testimonials that will be part of the new app, and um, that's a, that's a process in work. So stay stay tuned with that. I mean those testimonials are already available, most of them. Um, I, I, I did some work on a few of them today that, that nobody's seen yet, but, uh, anyway, that's, those testimonials are, it's just great to be able to send somebody a short, a short testimonial, uh, that kind of grabs their attention. Yeah, absolutely. But absolutely. I, I love it. Just love it. Keep, keep, keep adding to it. I love it. So, Christine, so, I want to actually share an update around sure. my brother. I just talked to my brother. And um, and so there are some of you on here that don't know uh, his testimonial. But um, my brother, about mm, well, right after uh, the um, he did a vaccination and he um, he ended up getting these side effects. And the side effects were double vision, ringing in his ears so loud he couldn't hear. And then the strength in his jaw, he couldn't chew any longer. And this went on for 18 months. And my brother is really a big jock. He's a go pro golfer. He, he plays pickleball at a very high level. He was a volley big volleyball player. So, so this just changed his life overnight. And so for 18 months, he was literally not doing anything. He quit dating, everything, because he, it, the symptoms wouldn't allow him to put himself out there any longer. So I said, you know, Dean, I don't know what this will do for you, but I know what it did for me. Please, please try the cell defender. So my brother's a big skeptic. And it was about a month that I... I kept checking in, kept checking in, nothing, nothing, nothing. He wasn't going to say anything about a month into it. And I had him taking four doses, uh, four dropper fulls a day. Okay. And um, so anyway, about a month into it, he goes, Carol, I don't know, but, and I can't say yet, but something's happening. I said, okay, good, good. Um, about a month and a half after he said, Carol, I'm about 90% back. And guys, about, mm, I'm going to say three weeks ago, he's like, Carol, I'm 100% back. And guess what, guys? He is now in a relationship. He went back to dating. He is now in a relationship and they are planning their first cruise together. I mean, guys, this gave him his life back. He's playing pickleball. He's playing golf again. He's being able to drive at night again. And he's being able to eat meat again. And 18 months, he wasn't able to do any of this. So this has me on a mission, Rich, to share it with everybody. With everybody. Well, you know, just think of the impact you've had, Carol, on somebody so dear to you. It's one thing, you know, to talk to the neighbor or the, the stranger you don't know, but uh, here's your brother. I know. And uh, to see what you've been able to do for your brother in a place where he was, he was looking for hope. You know, 
Um, this week, one of the things that Doug Dickey had me work on was a certain phone call that uh, Paul Stowers, uh, one of Paul Stowers people had uh, with Rick Deitch. And this person was quite concerned because of uh, some of the chemical, some of the preservatives that are, that are in the plus relief. And Doug Dickey said, so they put this call together and he was blown away by the stuff that Rick shared. It's a, it's now been made into a little video. It's on line 160 of aviniehealthtraining.com. It's called Amazing Plus Relief. But you were mentioning some of the after effects of the, of the vaccine. And this, one of the things that blew me away when I listened to this call was Rick was talking about how the plus relief also has a big impact on some of the damage from vaccines. And I would never considered that. I, I've always considered Cell Defender would help with that. Silver would help with that. But the, the plus relief has a mechanism there that's also helping with vaccine damage. And, uh, you know, Rick, you know how Rick is. He's just amazing to listen to. Uh, and he also addressed the questions. You know, every question this lady had, he went right down the line and pointed out that uh, and she was completely satisfied when he was done. So if you get a chance, it's a 14 minute video. You can listen to it. It's really an audio that just has some pictures added, but uh, it has Rick's picture and a picture of the products added. So it's, uh, you, you listen to that. I think you'll find it to be fascinating. Uh, we don't know what we've got our hands on here. He also talked about nerve regeneration. He talked about his uh, the studies he's doing with uh, with MS and and uh, some of the th results they're seeing there. And when you think of some of those kinds of issues, um, how people who didn't have feeling in part of their body and now they do, um, you know, normally we think of this for pain, but it goes far, far beyond pain. And what it's what it can do to for some of these issues, and I, I shared that with Chip. What what was your thoughts about that, Chip? Um, well, you got to be careful about introducing me because I got three pages of notes of stuff I want to say, having listened to you. Um, yeah, it it was it was incredible. The the woman was really smart, and she was concerned about you know a couple of the ingredients in, in the plus relief, and he told about not just why they were in that product, but why they were required in the industry um, in order to qualify to get registered as a homeopathic um, substance uh, to be able to be preserved in that way and how he was so cautious and about the source and how much they used. And, and uh, then as Rich said, he went into um, details that I'd wondered, but never heard before. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, it's great to be around him. Um, I try to prepare myself so that if you ask me, my two favorite questions are how can this be? And we had a whole bunch of how can that this be on this call tonight, right? How can this be? And, and then and then tell me more. Um, and when he gets those questions, maybe I can go um, two or three or four at, at the most five times if you ask me again, well, tell me more. But for him, he can go clear back to the, you know, original people, the original research, maybe remember where it was published. I was thinking today, um, you know, we got one biochemist, right? But it feels like we're linked to the world of wisdom. Well, how's that happen? Uh, and, I, and I kind of dawned on me, it is obvious when, I, when I, the guy reads um, pretty much every technical and medical journal that comes out. And he, people ask him, you, you know, do you have one of those uh, photographic memories? And he, he said, no, but I read a lot and I remember everything I read, if it's important. And so I don't know exactly what a photographic memory is, if that isn't it. But he, he it's just crazy. I mean, I remember back in the early days, um, people would ask if uh, the product would remove benzene rings, which is one of the solvents. And it was one of the topics, right, in, in this 14-minute call we're talking about. And uh, thought it wouldn't. But then in the January 1996 Journal of Active Crystallography, Rick comes across this article that shows that the flat side of a benzene ring attaches to one side of a zeolite cage and another zeolite cage comes on the other side. Now you've got a toxic Oreo where the creamy, tasty center is the benzene ring and it becomes easy to excrete. 
And so he was talking on this call about benzene actually being manufactured in our body at a very low level for a reason. And, you know, the woman, every time someone challenges him, it was like, you know, I'm just sitting there and, and I'm thinking, okay, uh, she is super smart, you know, super smart, super well prepared. And I've never been in a situation like that when he wasn't able to go another level, another a level, another level of tell me more until finally they thought, okay, um, you know, this is the mother load of information. This is the guy. Uh, this is this is the person who has the big picture and went to work in the most important places to help the most people. And we have his picks of the litter of a lifetime for products. And that's what has become a beanie. And so um, maybe somebody approached him at one time, like for the cell defender. He was working at Rexall as their lead um, product formulator after you know, being picked up just to help the other formulators within a year, he's the lead guy. And a couple of uh, men come in from Croatia that have a Zeolite product for him to consider because he's got a billion dollar marketplace that he's feeding products into. And he said, well, let me look at it. They came back and he said, well, yeah, I, you know, I love the idea. Looks to me like you need to get control of the size and clean out the cage for it to be, you know, truly a useful product. And they walked away shaking their heads because they wanted his market, they didn't want his wisdom, but it haunted him and he kept working on it. And that's our lead product today. Mm. So think about that. Um, mm -hmm. I, have a, I have a few things I got to do about Rich, okay? So, <laughs> so I, I get to be immersed in this, uh, knew Rich's family. A lot of people didn't know Rich very well. I knew there was a Rich out there, uh, but then when Dave called with him on the phone that day, and I, I remember, you know, of course he's scared, but we've just had this gigantic win with Dave Johnson. That's pretty much the exact same thing. A guy that gets the threat and he hasn't done anything yet to hurt himself worse. And, and I have to say, I hope we look back on the standard of care for men who have prostate problems in 2023. And we say, you know what? That was inhumane. It was barbaric what we used to do to men that had prostate problems back in 2023. And I kind of knew that Rich was gonna be okay. And I, I don't, the devil made me do it kind of stuff. I, I do remember Rich, Rich reminded me when he was talking tonight and he said, the doctor said that my prostate was the size of Connecticut. And I don't know if you'll remember this Rich, but I said, well, Connecticut isn't that big a state. You know, and so you kind of break, you kind of break the, the tension, it's like, Okay, apparently, and, and it was the moment to me was uh, wanting to pass over to Rich. Apparently, these guys know what they're doing and, and they, you know, uh, know we didn't, we didn't take control of his situation. We knew that Rich could take control of his situation if he had the right tools in his hands. It's never Dave and I are going to, okay, we got something that will help you, Rich. No, it's not like that. It's there's ideas out there, big ideas. And if you're willing to be the captain of your own ship, um, you can make all the difference in the world. I do remember uh, in the conversation, and one of the things that is brought up is, is hormone therapy. Well, that doesn't sound that bad, right? I mean, you know, hormone therapy, no big deal, right? Well, I don't know if I was the first one that ever called it that, but uh, I noticed that the men perked up a lot more if I called it what it really is. The theory is that you can't have a male problem if you're not a man, so you go through chemical castration. And I actually thought maybe I was the only one saying it until I came across, uh, I was studying some of the different chemotherapies that are used in that situation. And one of them was speaking about, I kid you not, castration resistant forms of that disease and how they had to go even more desperate, even more drastic into the treatments. And the men become a shadow of themselves. Uh, Dave happened to have a guy on his own block that had the same problem. And his was not as bad as Dave's. Dave's was what was called extracapsular, which meant that it had escaped the organ that it started in. 
The other guys wasn't. Dave told him he was going to, you know, see if he couldn't do it in a healthy way. The other guy, you know, thought, well, you know, I'm going to turn myself over to the big institutions. They'll take the responsibility for the outcome. My family wants me to do it. And, and Dave said it, it, it haunts him uh, to see him, you know, about, about all he does now is, is he can make it to the mailbox and back. Well, what's Dave doing? You know, riding mountain bikes uphill in the snow, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, you, there's there's such a giant difference. What what's Rich Cotter doing? Um, he is taking us all under his wing. And I, I have to say, Rich, you know, your reluctance to give up even one thing out of the Avini Health Training.com. I mean, essentially, Rich is the keeper, one of the keepers of the flame, I call it. And you know, maybe the most crucial keeper of the flame at this point is Rich Cotter. And so he essentially has the unabridged works of everyone who has spoken or written or thought or researched about this topic. I mean, that's that's essentially, you're looking at the guy that does it right there. And so I remember my mom, I, I, I took, you know, I, I'm literally looking around the room here and there's there's notebooks this thick all over the place. I think this is maybe, I don't know, seventh or eighth one um, since we you know got going with Avini again. I just writing down about these calls and stuff like that. And, and my, my mom, you know, brought out this huge, you know, array of boxes and passed them over to Marcy. And, and she said, well, this is Chip's notes from going through school. I, I live on notes. I don't know why it's just, I just live on notebooks. And, and Marcy looked at that and she said, well, isn't there, isn't there something that you could do without in, in all those boxes? And I said, no. Those are the unabridged works of William III. If you put, take one page out of there, it's no longer unabridged. And it's the same problem Ritz has got. He can't give up one recording because it could be the one that makes all the difference for somebody. And so uh, just those kind of things. And I, I did want to say one important distinction, too, in Rich's story compared to Dave's story. Rich went three months before they looked at him again. And, and I hope Rich remembers that I warned him. I said, you know, if they look at you, you know, a month, six weeks into this, that number may go up before it goes down. Well, that did happen. Thank goodness I, I alerted Dave that it might happen because it did happen. And he called me up, you know, and kind of concerned and worried. And, and he said, you know, the number went up instead of down. I said, yeah, you just started a huge fight in there. And you're seeing evidence of the battle taking place. You're not looking directly at it. You're seeing evidence. You're seeing the, the smoke come up from the wars. And, and thank goodness. And you're grateful for Rich's stock um, each point along the way where that you know, he said, well, let's monitor it. You know, what a wonderful you know, medical person. I, I know we got medical people on the call with us tonight. I'm, I'm thinking how much Africa power we got on tonight between Carol and Rich and, and uh novella and, and is it nikita i think if i remember dr nikita from last week i mean we yeah. africa africa is all over this call with separate efforts it's it's nuts but then um you know dave went back to the doc and, and she, he said well my my buddy my buddy tells me <laughs> there's a reference for you my buddy tells me we might be looking at evidence of the battle is that plausible she said yeah that kind of makes sense let's watch it a little longer and then, and then he got better. So um, whatever it is, if you can be in touch with somebody, it's all precious stuff. Oh. Yeah, I will say, uh, I, I wanted to, I wrote down something here. You, you were talking about everybody's humble here. You know, Rich was saying you go to these events. and Well, when you've been through these things, you know, when you've been through a company that collapsed or you've been through a disease that threatened you, maybe took your home and your livelihood and, and put you back into, you know, an hourly job, that kind of a thing. Uh, you're not just humble. Uh, you, you go through prostate troubles. You have had an overdose of humility. You know, it's real easy. This is us being confident. It, maybe it seems like we're humble, but this, this is all the confidence we can muster after some of the beatings <laughs> we've taken along the way. But, but um, we feel like we... Last thing I want to say to you guys, your skills, the people you know, your experiences, your story are of great value, maybe the greatest value they've ever been when you connect to this because of what you can do to help yourself and others. That's all I got.
Thank you, Chip. Thank you for sharing that. And we say there's so much wisdom mm -hmm. in this. Uh, yeah. um, like you said, the, the testimonials, these are all, um, we're all going to go out and share and, and hear more testimonials as we continue this calls. Rich, do you want to close with really appreciate you being our guest tonight? Well, thank you for very much. Well, it's, it's been a great honor to meet with this group. Uh, I'm really excited about the, the leadership role that Kyle is playing in the company and uh, the friendship he has with Neil. Um, he's, he's he, you know, ever since I joined, I mean, I've been hearing about Kyle. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, and Doug Dickey told me that Kyle was his mentor in the previous iteration of this of this thing. And uh, so excited to to see uh, what he's doing to help us uh, to to accelerate the progress of everyone. Certainly, so grateful for uh, you know Christine and, and Carol for your leadership as well. And Chip is a treasure. You know, we just uh, we just love Chip and uh, and his humility. You know, one time we were we were at the event in Salt Lake City in July and. Chip and, and I were and, and my and my wife Rhonda were there standing outside the hotel and and he used a, he coined a term that I had never thought of and he said uh, isn't it amazing to consider the rise and fall of networkers <laughs> and and uh, it was kind of in the context of a larger conversation but so many of us have been through the rise and fall uh, you know nations rise and fall uh, individual lives rise and fall. Uh, but it's it's through that experience that sometimes we are educated. You know, you hear Dave tell his story, and it's it's only taken him eight times of giving his heart to an opportunity to find a beanie. Uh, and and he says of all those opportunities, even from the big one that he he made millions at, he feels like a beanie is a better opportunity than anything he's ever seen. And what a great treasure for us to be here at this stage. There's Neil told me today there's only about 6,500 distributors. Well, you could use the word only, or you could say, wow, we've got 6,500. But compared to what it's going to be, uh, when will it be uh, 65,000? Um, and we'll look back and say, I remember when. And we were we were part of the pioneers pioneering group that that brought it, uh, and, and we're, eight, we're, we're fortunate enough to be involved early. So thank you again for the opportunity to be with you and uh, share my story and and uh, feel of, of your spirit. Thank you so much. Be before we go, and I, I really appreciate you, Rich, catching, you know, uh, something really important. Kyle's here with us tonight. When I first, you know, got going again, uh, our sponsor was Neil Roth. And every morning, every morning, uh, we would listen to Kyle Helm. And I think the three of us knew that we'd, you know, I knew they'd be there. They knew I'd be there. And it's part of uh, maybe why we're together now. Uh, we know that we're, that some things run on be there power. And if, if you just keep showing up, you know, and if somebody's, you know, comes back to you and you say, you still doing that zeolite thing. And you can say, well, yeah, you know, they catch you doing it, that you're still doing it, that you still feel it's important. And, um, you know, it's incredible what's happened, but uh, we hung on every word and we were there together and, and, and the, the togetherness. You got to have running buddies. You got to have running buddies. And I, I have to say, I love this group. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. You know, having, you know, Christine and Craig be hurt and gone for a little bit. Uh, you definitely feel that, but uh, this is a really, really special way to spend Thursday evening. Thank you so much, everybody. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I offer my thanks to both of you guys and all the others uh, tonight on this call. Thank you very much for being here. Oh. Every week it gets better and better. All right, I apologize. I'm freezing, but Kyle, um, Kyle, I'm really looking forward to meeting you in two weeks in person. And I can't wait to hear him play the drum. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny is my my iPad is sitting on a drum right now. Truthfully, <laughs> it's that that's the my stand tonight. 
for my iPad is a drum. <laughs> awesome. Well, hey, I, uh, Christine, I, I missed what you said. You cut out a little bit, but I cannot wait to meet you as well and, and uh, get together. And you know what? On that note, real quick, I will say two seconds about our event. I actually, I told somebody today, um, I, I, I told her she's thinking about coming to this event. And I said, you don't understand. I've been to one event, one of our summits, and it was the best event I've ever been to in my life. And, you know, you guys, Rich was talking about the events and, and, and almost being nervous to go and because you we've, we've been there. If you've been around the industry, you've seen what happens. And there's something that happens at our events that is so different that you've never seen or experienced anything like what we do. And, and guys, I'm not trying to hype up the event. Granted, you all should be there. But what I'm trying to tell you is that when your company isn't based on hype, you have substance and that substance is what drives our company. And that is what takes it from our heads to our heart. And those events show you that this company is not based on hype, that this company is based on substance. And that is why, like Rich was saying, we will and when will we be at 65,000 distributors, right? And, and, and it's because what we have is real. We've been through the trials and the tribulations and, and we've stuck together and, and, you know, we do have that show up power that Chip was talking about. And guys, it, when we come together at a place like Dallas, whether you get anything from the content that's on stage or not, what you will get just spending time in the hallways with the people that you've seen on the calls or the testimonies that you've heard and you get to talk to that person will change your life in one way or another, whether it changes your business or not, whether it builds your belief or not, it'll change your life. And I, I cannot wait to meet so many of you that I have not met yet in person. So I'm looking forward to that. Christine, love you. I'm so glad you're you're back. And um, I'll be quiet now. I didn't mean to jump in, but I had to just no. say I can't wait to meet you too. <laughs> Rich, thank you so much again for everything that you do. Pleasure, Kyle. Chip, here, <laughs> Kyle, it isn't a call without you. No, no. <laughs> well, you guys know I'm here. I'm just I'm gonna sit here and keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Well, listen, everyone, it's just about 830 and we respect your time and we're grateful for everyone. Oh, thank you very much. We look forward to seeing you either next week, next Thursday night on Avini Vibes or. Yes. So God bless each and every one of you. And thank you. Okay. And everyone. Everyone, I will be, this is recorded. I will be sending it to Christine so she can send it out to everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody. That was excellent. Bye. Bye. Bye.